Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Hey, what's up, Life Transformation Radio listeners? Thank you for joining us on this amazing, amazing Friday. I hope you've had an amazing week. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and International Bestselling Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 90 countries with 48,000 dedicated listeners and hundreds of thousands of downloads. So I just want to say thank you so much for your support. And I want to say that you are amazing. So whether it's your first time joining us or you've been listening to us for some time, I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing, highlighting that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we use it to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. You can listen to us live right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, Tuesday through Friday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can also join our Facebook group at Life Transformation Radio Community and never miss an episode by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Life Transformation Radio can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, Google Podcasts, Pandora. I could go on and on, but I want you to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We also have a YouTube channel. Go search us Life Transformation Radio on YouTube and subscribe as well on YouTube. On the show, my guests are entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing human beings that are impacting everyone around them. And my guest today does exactly that. If you have any questions for any of the guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, Tuesday through Friday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, check us out and call us up at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. Zero nine. And with that, please tell me welcome to the show, my friend, my bro, my dude, Mr. Action himself, Rob Actus. Rob, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. What's up, my brother, Sean? Thanks so much for having me today. It's a thrill to be here on Life Transformation Radio. I just want to say that I'm pumped, baby. I'm pumped. He's pumped. <laughs> Dude, uh, I want to welcome you back to the show, man. It's, it's great to have you back. Okay, Sean. Um, I've never been on the show. You called me a while ago. And said, uh, <laughs> I need you like right now. The guest is not able to make it in an emergency. Can you do this? And you say, you've already been on the show, what, four or five times? And I'm like, yeah, I've never been on the show. Thank you so, so- much, Don. <laughs> I'm on the show. So Rob and I got a, got into a, a disagreement months ago, at like last year sometime. And I'll, he's like, "When are you gonna have me on your show? Like, did you been on the show already? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you've already been on the show." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "No, yeah, I, I had you on the I'm show like, multiple yeah, times." Have. No. Yeah, I was like, "No, oh, you have it. I have it. What are you talking yeah. about?" <laughs> so I was like, "No, dude, you're lying." So I had to go back into my archives. I'm like searching through 400 episodes. I'm like, "Hold on, you're in here somewhere." And he's like, "No worry, I'll wait. Don't worry." Don't worry, I'll wait. You know, actually, I'll be back. Let me know when you find it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I've never, never actually really been on the show. So, oh god, so embarrassing. I'm here now. But I'm, like, no, dude, I'm here now. On the show. I'm That's here good, now. man. Yeah, love, love, love to have you on the show, man. So, the title of this episode is "Living the Law of Action" with Mister Action, Rob Actus. He has discovered the formula to getting what you want on your terms by enduring a near-death experience of his 14-year-old daughter and shortly after facing a near-death himself. Through a dynamic and engaging presentation, Rob motivates audiences to realize they can reach their potential faster and easier when their goals become larger than their fears. With crystal clarity fueled by creative thinking, he shares his roadmap to breaking inertia, 
setting a course of action, and following through to smoothly implement. Regardless of your business model or industry, this simple yet powerful system can help you achieve raw potential to create amazing results. Rob is the best-selling author of The Law of Action. He's a speaker. He's a voice actor for many national TV commercials for top brands, including CarMax, Black Box Wine, Bayer Aspirin, and Walmart. He's also the narrator for a good friend of ours, Hal Elrod, who is the miracle morning, absolutely incredible, amazing, amazing human being, and even more incredible, amazing community. And he narrated Hal Elrod's The Miracle Morning audiobook, along with over 30 other audiobooks on Audible, with a combined sales of over 300,000 copies. He lives by the law of action. Decide, plan, act. Down in the show notes is his website. Go to robactus.com, or you can click on the hyperlink. Click on that. Go to his website. Check him out. Find his social media platforms that you love, and send him a friend request, letting him know that you listen to this episode of Life Transformation Radio. Rob, with all that said, man, I got to know, the first question that I want to ask is why? Why do you do what you do? Well, that's a big question. I just got chills. So the big why is because I have faced death. I have almost seen my voice will crack every time. I have almost seen my daughter die. She had a 4% chance of survival. I've had a 357 magnet put to my forehead, and I've had a few near-death experiences that really put things into perspective. And when I was trying to not die from uh, my blood clot, I really thought of ways I lived my life and how I took action and ways that I didn't take action. And I discovered that when I was in flow and I was doing what I was meant to do, life was so easy and so enjoyable. Now my why is, and I take a stand for this for everyone, and that is to live every single day like you want to be alive, to live every day with purpose and inspiration. Dang, man. Live life with inspired action. And I didn't know that. Well, I kind of, I think I kind of did, but uh, you you had a gun to your head, like put to your head. I Man. Um, you know what? Um, uh, yeah, it was, it was horrible. And uh, I didn't die and I wasn't hurt. So right. what happened right. is I was at a clothing store. I don't know if you have Ross, you are across country, like a Marshalls or sure. a TJ Maxx. Yep. And I was there. Yep. And I was in a great mood. Like, you know, some just have these great moods. I'm like, I'm going to go get some new clothes. Okay young and single and I was going to get some clothes and I was, you know, I didn't know what I was going to get, but I was in there looking at my pants and um, there was the gang that was terrorizing San Diego for a while. It was called the Get Down Gang. They would come in like four or five at a time. They weren't wearing masks and they shot into the ceiling of the store and then they robbed and it was a very violent situation. So I was standing there looking at at uh, pants and I heard the gunfire and I turned around. It wow. is a moment. Yeah. It's a moment that I will never forget. And um, unfortunately what happened was, well, fortunately for me, but not fortunately for the person that was um, visited next by this person or this animal or whatever we want to call him. Um, he decided he was had gun on my forehead. I was looking at him. There's nothing you can do. You just, there there's nothing you can do he's like don't move and I didn't do anything i just stood there what happened was he got his his uh intention shifted or his attention shifted and uh there was a young 17 year old girl in the cash register right by where i was at with the pants and he decided that it was the time he wanted the money so he took the gun away from my really hit her with the gun i mean he, he beat her up and it was very traumatic. Wow. I got down on all fours and claw crawled to the back of the door because there were people rummaging the back. It was like, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back. And it was a very busy night. It was very post or pre-pandemic. And what happened was there was gunshots. And I don't know 
why people do that. There was a lot of teens and people in the parking lot. It was a very active mall. So all these people came inside the store, and the robbers, they just milled in with the crowd, and they're gone. And uh, wow, very, very dramatic experience. Uh, I will never for moments in your life where you're like, wow. And it really put things in perspective. That was enough. And then I had another incident where I was in La Jolla and I was in the ocean. I got caught in a rip current and I got carried out to sea. And um, I, Boy, it's cow. called La Jolla Cove. Yeah. And it's called La Jolla Cove. And I, I, uh, I can't swim any longer. And I finally swam back in and got into the cove, but I was trying to get out. Barely, I was sitting there and I'm paddling and paddling and you just get exhausted. And there's no lifeguard in that area. Um, and I was, was just barely there. And all of a sudden a big giant wave took me and just kind of s- slammed me into the rocks with the barnacles. I ended up on top of the rock. Wow. That was, that was intense. So those are my early childhood memories of, 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 and then when I was a little kid, I almost drowned. And so I've had all these near death experiences. So Holy after, cow. after seeing my daughter, um, you know, survive her comas and her surgery and uh, rehab and her strokes. And then me, I finally, it finally hit me in a massive way that like, okay, uh, there's a reason that I'm still alive. So I need to have really a serious look at my life and live my life on purpose. And I lived it on purpose before. Really, sure. really live it on purpose because um, how many chances do you get? Like, all right, it's a clue I get. I'm supposed to be here. Uh, I'm magnificent. So now I really work hard every single day for the message of live every day like you want to be alive. Like you don't no guarantee for tomorrow. Right. Holy smokes, man! You, you've been sounds like you've been through a lot. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think about, it's funny because I, I was situations. sitting here thinking, I'm like even more stuff. Like I'm not even going. To this. Like wow, <laughs> I could write a book and all this stuff. I didn't even include. Lately, all this stuff has been coming back in my memories, and it's just blowing my mind. I'm like, oh, my God, I totally forgot about that. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's just how life is and your brain works. Right, and I've got, you know, four kids myself, and I just I just don't think I'm emotionally equipped to handle just the loss of a child. And anybody listening who has kids who is a decent parent and even a decent human being, I think would feel the same. You know, there's a lot of sex trafficking and a lot of human trafficking going on in this, in this country and in this world. And I just, I mean, I've got a son and just turned 18 yesterday and I got four or three girls and I just, I can't imagine anything bad happening to them. You know, like I just, I can't, even though he's an adult, I'm like, dude, dude's not ready, man. The, the, this world is going to punch him in the mouth, and he's just not ready. And a lot of kids aren't. A lot of kids are not ready because now that social media has opened the door to a lot of different things, um, they're just not ready, man. Like, they're just not ready. You know, these talk about panel vans when I was a kid growing up in Detroit. You used to talk about panel vans and kidnapping kids and never really seen it. But you heard about it. Well, guess what? On social media and on YouTube and Google, you can see it. You can watch it. You can know about it. I mean, you, like, it's, not a, it's not a fairy tale anymore. This is some real stuff, you know. But I just, until it happens to you, it, it'll always be just a, well, what's the, whatever my mom says and whatever my dad says or whatever, you know, whatever. Until you know someone they got kidnapped or got sex trafficked. I know a couple of people. I know one girl who tells her story about being sexually trafficked to Mexico. And uh, it, it's not fun. So, no, man. No, I tell you what, Sean, um, there's nothing. When I had my blood clot, I actually like, went to myself and said, oh, it feels like I'm going to die. And what does that feel like? What, what does it feel like? Like, I feel it is not. Oh, there's impending death coming. Like you're going to get attacked. And, oh my God, I may die. Like in a movie, like you know, this overwhelming feeling. Like, uh, I think this is the end of my life. It's crazy. I don't even know how. To, yeah. I 
can't, but, but here's the thing. As terrified and scared as I was with that moment, and no matter all the things that have happened to me, even the point, even the point of having a 350 cent magnum put in my forehead, nothing compared to imagining your child dying, having a doctor look you in the eyes, putting his hand on your shoulder and say, you need to prepare for the worst. This is really bad. Your daughter has about a 4% chance of survival. We're going to do everything we can to save her life, but her quality of life after this surgery, we're not even going to address. All we want to do is save her life. You need to prepare for the worst. I, I, I wouldn't even know what to do. If somebody oh, told me that, I, that my daughter had a 4% chance, I wouldn't even know what to do. It is the most I, – I, look, there are people that you see their enemies. I wish the worst of them. I would never wish that pain on anybody. And I will tell you, I was on Clubhouse the other night, and I met a woman who had a very similar medical uh, incident happen to her son. It's called AVM. It's a burst vein in their brain. It's a wet – and you broke it up a, a little bit. It's a what? It's a it's a blood vessel that bursts. Uh, there's no pre notice. It just calls an AVM. I don't exactly know what that means. Oh, okay. Uh, what the diagnosis? Okay. It, it it bursts in your brain. So when they did surgery on my daughter, you. they opened up her skull, and he said like a grenade went off, and it's powerful. And one of the things that she was talking about, sharing her story, how she has PTSD from it. Now my daughter has lived it, so I lived. It. I look, she has her right. own way that she sees it through her eyes, and I'm not in any way discounting, you know, her experience. But from my point of view, because I live her of what her experience was, like my experience, I still have PTSD. I get a phone call from her. It's way off maybe for the last six months to a year. Because she has additional medical issues and has been in the hospital on multiple, multiple times when she was recovering from this whole incident, um, a coach her front door, and the paramedics and the police and the fire department knew the car to our front door because of all the time she was here, because of the massive seizures that she suffered because wow. it was PTSD. Every time the phone would ring, and she lives in, in uh, Georgia now, but when she was there, the phone would ring, or my ex-wife would call, I would lose, I would lose it, because you still have that, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so there is PTSD, and I'm not the only one. I now met a lot of other parents who've had children in this situation, and it goes on and on and on, and, and it's always going to be. And, you know, I get a call and I miss it, and then I'm always back, Are you okay? Are you okay? And then the other woman, the mom, is telling me the same thing. She's like, when she gets a message about anything, is my son okay? And even the point of when they start to like give a little more um, freedom. Like I remember my daughter, when she had to first wanted to take showers with herself. She hits her head. She could immediately die because her head is kind of fragile now. And so you have to let them go and live their life. Man, it is, I would never ever want anybody to experience that pain. I would never want anyone to have the feeling of like, I'm going to die. And have that realization of you need to live your life in a different way and really live a life in flow. And all the other stuff, the massive story and all the bullshit, BS that goes on around the world and all that stuff you can control. Just be happy and live every day and take every moment as precious. And that's what I do. So that's why living in inspired action and my mission of getting people to do that is so important to me because I want them to learn from what by chance that it happens to get a jump start on their life yeah. inspired actions of like, oh my God, now what do I do? I want you to start now. Right. Man, I love that, man. Like I said, I got four kids. I can't even begin to imagine. My uh, daughter, my 14-year-old, years ago, fell over her handlebars, and the bike oh. landed on her and broke her collarbone. So she comes in the house. She goes, I fell off my bike. And I'm like, well, don't do that. You know, kind of being like the typical dad. Like, well, don't do that, you know. And she come in, like, arm all hanging at her side. She's kind of hunched over, you know. Glasses are broken. And I was like, oh, oh, 
you okay? And she's like, no, no, I, my arm hurts, you know, like really bad. And my wife loses it. She's like, oh, my God. Oh my. And starts freaking out. I was like, hold on, stop. And I look, and her collarbone area on, on one side was super bruised, turning colors, and you could see it's broken. Like, I'm not going to describe oh, to you how man. gross it looked, but it looked – I'm surprised it didn't penetrate the skin. You could tell it was broken. I was like, get in the car now. <laughs> right? I'm like, get in the car. So we go to the hospital, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is common. Like, the doctors didn't even care. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll reset that. No problem. Yeah, it's way good. Yeah, it's way good. You know, so, you know, they, they number up and do her thing, and they kind of massage everything back in place. And they're like, okay, well, don't move for a while, and it's going to hurt, and we're going to bandage you up, and, you know, whatever. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, you know, so crazy. And then my six-year-old, when she was almost four, you know those circle, like, watch batteries? Yeah. So I don't oh, know. she swallowed I don't it. know. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Worse. So she comes out of her room screaming. And I'm like, what? And she's, like, pointing to the roof of her mouth. The battery seized to the top of her mouth. You couldn't get it off. It was stuck there. Uh, it was like acidizing in her mouth. And so we rushed to the hospital. I'm like, there's a battery stuck in her mouth. And everyone's like in the ER, like yelling. I was like, get something now. And so, so they take her back and they're like, it's a battery. There's a, there's a, and so they were like, how? I'm like, who cares? Just get it off. Like it's, 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 it's acidizing to her freaking mouth. And so doctor comes in and they're putting things down her throat to catch the battery, make sure she didn't choke on it. And I'm like losing it now. I'm losing it. You know, I'm like, this is so ridiculous. We're just here. You know, like my daughter, like, you know, breaks her collarbone. Now we're here with this. Thr- I was like, these kids are ridiculous. You know, like it's agonizing. It's it agonizing is. for parents, man. Like, uh, like I don't want th- that type of, like, I don't, I don't need that stress in my life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to wake up to a phone call about a kid who in a car accident or my kid, you know, whatever, you know, like that's just, Ugh, I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. I mean, as a parent, and, and there's nothing worse. And then I remember when my daughter was in a coma, and I'm looking at her, and I flat out said, you know, God, I said, I'm with her right now. Like, it's amazing yep. that you actually think that. It's weird. I would, never, I would never think that that would be a thought to come across your brain, but I was so like, no, no, I had a great life. You know, I'll switch, I'll switch. When you see that in movies, it's weird. So that's yep. what I was thinking. It was, it was powerful. It's, uh, yeah, man. it's a life change, so, all right? So that's, yeah. So the whole show is about transformational moments. And although you and I have been through quite a few, and we've covered a little bit of them, what would you say is the transformational moment that made Rob Actis who he is, Mr. Action? What is a transformational moment that changed you and then put you on the path to what you're doing today? Well, you could look at a lot of part of my life. There was a TV show called Laugh In, and I heard Gary Owens on. He goes, live from downtown Burbank, it's Laugh In. And I turned the TV off, and I stood in front of the TV, and I declared to my family, I want to talk on TV. Now, four years old, what does that mean? I, I don't know how I knew that. That's the start of everything. And then when I was six and seven, I used to always listen to radio, five, six, seven. And then seven and eight, I get a little bit more, you know, my brain developed a little bit more. I listen to radio all the time. And we drive by the radio station in San Diego, KCBQ, and go look at the dish through the window and wave. My dad was really supportive of that. I really have to thank my dad. He would do that. And then as I grew even in sixth grade, I was the kid who was the announcer guy. I stood up in front of the whole school in sixth grade and read announcements on the microphone in front of the high entire school. And then in seventh grade, I started doing announcements over the PA. And then in ninth grade, and then in tenth grade, I got to our TV channel and became a reporter. And then in eleventh grade, I was still a reporter. Then one in my senior year, I was not a reporter anymore. I was an anchor. And when I was 15, to go back, I had a friend that worked on the weekends at a radio station, and her name was V, and she was on a big radio station in San Diego. I'd hang out at the radio station and be there while she was on the air. I got to learn the end of radio, 
And so I just followed this path that was set for me. And yes, I do national TV commercials. And yes, I do audiobooks. But what I've learned is to communicate with my voice, communicate a message that is transformational. And that has been just this journey of every time I'm in a and in flow, it's just an amazing thing. I was a top radio personality in San Diego for 15 years. And I started at the number one radio station. And it's just all been laid out for me. And I'm still doing it every day. I just got done in a commercial, um, TV commercial, um, just a couple minutes ago, right before we got on the air. Using my voice is so perfect to me. Because I'm able to communicate. And in Hal mm-hmm. Elrod's book, I was able to bring his words life because of my, my soul and my experiences and my voice. I love it. So you decided to use your voice in a way to inspire people that you know not a lot of people even think about doing or even can do. You know, I think that everybody should have a podcast. Or actually, they need a podcast. Everybody needs Absolutely. to host a podcast. I just don't think everyone should. You know, like, like I just, some people are hard to listen to. You know, if you, if, I mean, some people have high-pitched voices, and some people, um, they just, maybe they drag. We have, a, we have a pastor at our church, uh, super cool dude. But the, some of the times the way, I think he does it on purpose. You know, at first it was like, does that, wait, what? And now I think he just does it on purpose because it bugs people. But the end of the sentence will be something like, it's what Jesus did, right? That's the, that's the sentence. But he'll do, he'll do it in a way, and he's like, that's what Jesus did. Like, it's all, like, dramatic, you know? And everybody's just looking at him, and then he smiles, and then he does his, you know, keeps going with this server, whatever. And we asked him, like, why do you do that? He's like, effect, man effect this is serious you know <laughs> like it's so <laughs> funny to, to hear him talk you know it's so funny because you're in a conversation and he's rocking and rolling and then he'll look and he'll just pop off in the middle of the sermon and he'll get super traumatic for a second and we're like we're waiting for like this one like this one line that's gonna like save humanity you know but it's stuff that we already know you know and he's just like yeah it's for effect man you know so um that's the way that he kind of uses his voice is kind of a uh, an inside joke from the church, but I love that you can do different commercials and you can do podcasts and do audio book. I mean, there's man, the power of voice, man, I, I would, I would love to be the voice of like a GPS or like a, like okay, anything. Funny I mean, think say, about okay. how many ways you could voice, you know, you could use your voice. Yeah. It's funny you say that. So one of the things that I did a long time ago, I've been the voice of a lot of carnival rides like I've screamed, um, it goes all over the time. I hear, but there's a guy that's really? electrocuted, and I'm the voice, and I scream. They came in the house, and um, it's not like it was electrocuted. I'm like, ah, ah, even more so loud, and was really loud. Oh my god, oh my god! And it was just for this carnival. Ride. It was just for a dark ride. I've done a lot of voiceovers for for carnival rides, and then the other thing I did was I'm the voice of a bear, and uh, it's called I don't remember what the name was. But it was actually a sobriety bear. And I was the voice of it. And I would say, you need a meeting. Or you are enough. Or got this. And all these messages. But to tell you how long ago it was, it was a little teeny record, a plastic record that was in a little hug bear. I don't know if there's still around what's called hug bear. Accomplishment is I have voiced over 400,000 telephone prompts. So like number the one wow. would say the one that would say, you know, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. You're calling from a touch to phone, please I would see if I get paid, but I would say it like so <laughs> he's one now by the Yola Mel Numero Show. Press one or I <laughs> see you have you have one hundred dollars and twenty five cents in your account. You are now overdrawn. You know, I mean, oh I did all, all that stuff. Yeah, kinds that, of weird I stuff. I probably heard you it's a fun. bunch of times. I oh, you have? You a bunch of times. Like, like, it's always like, like it's always. <laughs> yeah, 
That's me. Oh, That's me. man. That, yeah, so one I just awesome. did, it's so funny, insurance company in, uh, in Florida, and it's amazing technology. So what they do is I recorded almost 8,000 different names. Like eight, I know there's 8,000 different names. I did 8,000 different names. So what happens I is see. an email. Yeah, check it out. So it says, um, I just cracks me. I love the technology. So you get an email and you say, hey, well, thanks for being a member of the insurance company and blah, blah, blah. Hey, please click there. We have a message. And you'd click on it and a video would come up. There'd be, you know, music and it would say, good evening, Sean. Well, you're up late. Okay, so you want to find out about your insurance. Well, I'm here to guide you. Now, are you still at, I would say, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And it would show up on the screen and then go, you have homeowners and an additional auto insurance policy. Thanks for being a member five years. And just go on and on, but it would see your name throughout it. And it's really super cool technology and all kinds of ways to use your voice, like many different ways. The voice of the Luxor Hotel, which says, please step up. You're approaching the end of the walkway. Please step up. And also as a voice of Shark Tank and SeaWorld in Florida. So just crazy stuff. It's super fun. And a system in Seattle. I did that too. So, yeah, it's been a long, fun ride. Holy cow. Stuff that no one ever hears that knows you, but it's fun. I love it. Right. Right. Yeah, I just I just keep thinking about that GPS, like your voice, right? I could just see the GPS be like, in 1,000 feet, turn <laughs> left. Like, you know, like just smooth, right? Just no, like this. this. Are ready? Here we go. Approaching your destination in 1,000 feet, make a legal and safe turn. You <laughs> have arrived. There you go. How's that one? <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. You have arrived. You, stay safe. you have arrived. Some, you know, enjoy your stay. <laughs> you know, like, okay, so. Like, so can you imagine a motivational so, GPS? Like I know. You know right? what I mean? Like a motivational GPS, like this actual setting. And here's Rob. Take action and turn left in 500 Take feet. <laughs> you know, like, right? <laughs> Take action. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah. You know I what I mean? I auditioned to be the voice of Siri, the male voice of Siri. Oh, Siri, and I got the male the voice, shirt, yeah. And I got put on the short list. I didn't get it. But the funny thing is we didn't know it was Siri. Because Siri, wow. wasn't, Siri wasn't out yet. Right so that was kind right of cool. on. Yeah, very cool. I'm so, some projects. I have NDs, but there's some big things that if I get it, I'm, I'm hoping uh, yeah, I hear my voice all the time and get sick really, really quick. <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely. So the last part that I want to ask you, man, before we dive into a message and see if we have any callers, is what I want to ask is, How do you elevate the world around you? We have our why. We have our transformational moment. And instead of wasting it, you took action. You took action and you do what you do now. How do you elevate the world around you? Well, first, I wrote a book, The Law of Action, and that was Mm -hmm. first impact. And then writing the book, I got on stages, the second impact. Now I have living the live action show and there's another impact um i'm on clubhouse and i open up rooms about taking action all the time and just side chats another impact i do um private vip coaching i have other programs that i'm going to be really message is all of the amazing audiobooks narrate um ed rush's the 21 day miracle how Elrod's, um the miracle morning other books on leadership, on quarters books on how to write a book and market a book, publish like a boss. Book that I narrate are always, always, always going to be books that make a difference in people's lives. That's the important thing that I think about before I ever set the project because I want to make a difference. I'm here, I'm blessed to be here, and I want to make a Love it, man. Oh, dude, I love it so much. So what I want to do is see who we got on the call here. So, hey, uh, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Thank you for calling in. Where are you calling in from? 
Hi, this is Samara Hurley. I'm calling from Scottsdale, Arizona. Outstanding. Welcome to the show. You got a question for Rob? Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, it's interesting because I was just, I went onto the show and was listening and I had a car full of, of kids um, and all those kids go to a special school for kids on the autism spectrum. And I had them listening in. I was like, listen to this, listen to this, take action, take action. What are you guys going to do? Take action. And I had five kids in my SUV and we're all, and we're all wearing masks. And, and um, so I went, (laughs) I kind of put put it on uh, quiet for a little bit there when you guys were talking about um, your daughters and all because it was a little scary for those kids because they have anxiety and stuff. Um, right. And I went to each kid and I said, so, so what will you do to take action? And then I explained this new company I have. So it's funny because they call me Mrs. Action East Alive. So nice. my question to you is, my question to you, Mr. Action, huge fan, by the way, I listened to your podcast last night. Thank you. Um, it is when dealing with like teens and, and well, right now with COVID, everybody's depressed and struggling and lonely and all the things that we all know. So how do we help these teenagers? I mean, I have three kids, you know, on the spectrum who are 18 years old and they're graduating. Like, how do we help them take action? I, I, it's a really difficult time right now for a lot of people. And the one thing that I always try to impress on people is to take in all the precious moments of life and all the wins that you have and to stay very present in the very present moment. Now, I don't know. I'm imagining someone on the spectrum. It's probably very difficult to do that. And a way to alleviate anxiety is to really stay in the very present moment and really just celebrate the wins, the little wins. Like any accomplishment that you have is a win, and you should really acknowledge that. And you should you should acknowledge your and grandiose thing. It's a small step in action, creates momentum in your life, and the universe takes notice, and new opportunities happen, new adventures happen, and new people come into your life. It's amazing what happens when you live in momentum. When you're not living in action and you're in inaction, and not taking action, things become stagnant. When things become stagnant, you can get depressed and you can have anxiety. But if you stay in the very present moment and you just take what small steps to medium steps to larger steps to giant steps of moving towards wherever you're trying to get, that will create the momentum in your life that will bring the joy of living every day like you want to be alive. Wow, that's amazing advice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to the show. Actionista. I love that. I love that. Godsdale. We're neighbors. <laughs> How cool is that? I love it. It's love sunny it. here. It's sunny. That's <laughs> <laughs> huh? Seriously. Awesome. Seriously. Well, all the best to your son and everybody in the car. And uh, thank you so much for listening. And I hope in, in some way I touched their lives and, and that uh, I can. I can inspire them to live in action. Yeah. You know what? You, you did, but you also um, reminded me that we do celebrate the small wins. And the fact that he has a friend over tonight to sleep over for his birthday is priceless. And it is the little win. So that's, thank you. That's oh. huge. And what's your name? Gavin. He just Gavin. turned 17 is he listening today. Right now? Is he listening no right now? way. No way. Um, Your son's birthday is, is today, isn't it, isn't it, Sean? My he's son, got a friend here, so he might get a little Gavin. embarrassed. <laughs> oh, man. So, no, my, birthday, Gavin. My, and okay, hold on. Hang on, hang uh, on, hang my, on. They're, they're playing video games. No surprise there. Miracles happen, man. Dude, there's no way that that's... No way. Absolutely. That's hey, guys, happy birthday from Rob and Sean. Congratulations yeah. on all the wins in your life. Congratulations on all the action that you take. And congratulations for just celebrating life every second, every minute, every day. You are amazing. You are an action taker. And you break your fear. And you, you got this, man. Gavin, you got this. 
Happy birthday, man. My kid is name my kid's eighteen today and his name is Gavin. Oh really? Yeah. I have an eighteen year old, just turned eighteen, his name is Gavin. Well there you go. Well we uh we're gonna it's be amazing. celebrating tonight. So well happy birthday to your Gavin. Happy birthday to your Gavin. <laughs> yeah, hope, I hope Gavin has a big you. smile on his face from his birthday wish. That's so if cool. your Gavin's anything like mine, he closed the door on you and is playing video games with his friend again. <laughs> and he's <Not> super embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Take care. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank my you. gosh. That's Thanks so awesome. Wow. Oh, it's all, life is full of miracles. That, man? You never know, right? You There's never, no you accents never in the world, baby. You never know. There's, that's so cool, man. Awesome. So here's what I want to do, man. I want to close the show by giving people a message. And I believe that when you reach them on a personal level and you give them a message, when you give them an action, you know, amazing, amazing things happen. So what would be your message to the listeners of Life Transformation Radio? If they're struggling, if they're in action, what do you what do you want to tell them? Out of your day, out of your life, to listen to me. So that I will humbly thank you for. Secondly, I really want you, when you're feeling stressed, you're overwhelmed, to just stop for a moment and take a breath. Like just breathe and experience what it's like to be alive. Just take a moment. And when you do that, it really puts things in perspective, what I do. And it's the best way to overcome pretty much anything, and that is gratitude. When my daughter Aiden was in the hospital and she was in surgery, I expressed gratitude. And what I said was, I know this is really bad. I don't know what the outcome is. And I know she is where she needs to be. And she happens to be one of the top pediatric neurosurgeons in the world. And right now, I know she's alive. And when she was in her coma, I took gratitude and said, I know you're in a coma and you're alive. And if you are grateful for the little things, all the noise of the world really goes away. I'm grateful for so good. like Sean, grateful for my family, my daughter. I'm grateful for the incredible friends that I have. I'm great. And none of this awesome. has to do anything with, I'm grateful for my new Lamborghini. I'm great. Yeah, none of that stuff. It doesn't matter. What mm-hmm. matters in this world is connecting to human beings, the hearts of people. Like that matters when you get down to that very basic element. All this stress really goes yep. away. That's what right. I would say. Yeah, man. I love it. I love it, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely amazing at what you've accomplished in your years in radio and podcasting and just being an amazing human being, elevating the world around you, man. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, you can come back to the show anytime, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, as I said, time on Life Transformation Radio. It just gets better and better and better and better. <laughs> oh, oh, they'll see. All right, man. So, again, the listeners, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your support through 2017 on to now. Listen to in over 90 countries. 48,000 plus dedicated listeners, hundreds of thousands of downloads. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your support. If any of this conversation today resonated with you between myself and Mr. Action, Rob Actis, go to his website, robactis.com. Check out his social media. Check out his podcast, The Law of Action book that he wrote. And you never know where you might hear him and go, hey, I know that guy. Because now you've heard his voice on this show, and you're probably going to recognize it everywhere else. With that, thank you again so much. And I close the show by saying live your brand. Find opportunities every day 
to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call this living your brand. So until next time, live an amazing life.